I saw this tweet come up uh, from Jeremy Enns. He works at the Podcast Marketing Academy. He's kind of a solopreneur who's teaching uh, podcasting. So an illustration for improving your show's discoverability on your own platforms, which is always great. You need to be self-promoting yourself all the time. And it came in the form of this bingo card. Let me see if I can zoom out a bit. So this is from initially the podcast space, which is Anna and growing your podcast strategy and stuff. I thought this was really fun. It was like, oh, it popped up, it's bright, it really catches your attention, everybody loves bingo. Let's pay, where is your podcast? Does it show up in your email signature, on your business cards? Does it show up in your LinkedIn feature section? Does it show up in your social media, your website menu, bio document or your speaker document, your homepage on your website, your book or in your newsletter? I can say this from experience, from producing podcasts with other companies in this last job I was at, even the people in the podcast who are hosts, who are excited to be doing this podcast, don't have it on their email signature, don't have it on their business cards, don't even have it on their LinkedIn, don't have it on their social media, or even share when the live episodes go out. It wasn't on the website. It was buried 10 miles deep. Stuff like that, like you're doing your disservice. The whole point of having a podcast is to nurture those customer relationships that you already have and get other people to trust you and to be familiar with you but you're doing yourself a disservice, 100% a disservice, if you're not putting yourself out there, even in a subliminal way, right? So having it in your email signature, it, how many times do you send an email? Does all of your company that you work for send an email? Wouldn't that be an easy and awesome way to like kind of just get a little bit of promotional bump out there? Have a direct link to your podcast because tons of people listen to podcasts all the time i know people who listen to podcasts all day long you know imagine you sit down at your shift and you're listening to podcasts you well you've got eight hours of podcasts to fill you know are you meeting their needs and are you helping them discover that you have a podcast so i thought it was super interesting like with a business card uh totally throw on like a qr code link that goes to your podcast because if you're at a physical event you have a physical card assuming right you give someone your card, if it has a QR code that says, listen to the latest episode of Live from the Compass Tower. Boom. Someone can go, oh, that's neat. Snap. Okay, cool. And now I've, I'm on my phone, right? Yes, I'm at a physical event. And yes, you could do the whole QR code, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever thing. But that doesn't get them directly to the content that you're interested in providing for them because that's providing them value instantly. So a business card with a QR code linking directly to your podcast killer way to do it right i've seen that i've seen people with stickers you know like that's really interesting okay now i'm going to jump to the social media and the linkedin profiles having your your uh, content show up in those sections super valuable really interesting because it let's say someone sees something you tweet they're going to go to your bio hopefully and if you're on your bio it's like you have no links to anywhere relevant or somewhere that's personable or helpful, people kind of bounce off and they go, oh, okay, like I do, you know, like I go, oh, who's podcast space? Well, I just hover and go, oh, it's Anna from podcast space. Oh, end of story, that's it. You know, I don't have like this one, podcast growth school. I'm like, oh, okay, that leads me on to the next piece and the next piece. You wanna lead them into somewhere where you can capture their attention, provide them value, right? Website menu, I mean, you should have it on your website. You should have it on your homepage. Always be offering what you're producing. And then on top of that, what you're producing, you need to be able to link that and share that in other places. I saw a really interesting video on LinkedIn this morning, uh, and unfortunately I didn't pull it up, but they were talking about podcasting, um, making those social posts. You see those kind of like audiogram podcast snippets a lot on social media. Well, people will post a snippet with the little like waveforms going. Bzz, bzz, bzz. People who post those, like that's not helping people discover your podcast, right? You're just saying people, I want you to drop everything you're doing and go move over. And I'm guilty of this too. I want you to move over to a different platform and participate in something completely different on a whim. And here's a link. You're doing your production a disservice and you're not providing a great listener experience who are on, let's say, a LinkedIn or a Twitter or a Facebook or whatever. 
So what you should be doing, taking the most interesting, most valuable snippets and providing those on the social platforms after the fact and, and add to that conversation. Say, are you having this problem? Here's our solution. Are you interested in entertainment? Here's the most entertaining clip. Are you interested in sharing some valuable piece of information? Well, here's our most valuable clip, you know, and, and providing it on a native platform in a native situation. And people will naturally be interested be like, oh, that was actually quite helpful. I'm gonna go discover further episodes. So then go to your bio and you should have a link in your bio you know, or link tree or something like that. You always have to remember, like a lot of the content stuff that you're producing is going to live on a lot longer than you're anticipating. You're maybe looking for a social post now. Well, that social post is actually going to be living on, depending on the platform, be living on for quite some time, weeks and weeks. And it creates this living backlog of content that people can discover. Uh, this last year, I went to the Creator Economy Expo first event. There was an interesting gentleman that I cannot remember his name. He was a, a generalist kind of podcast guy. He interviews people about all kinds of different topics. He's not very specific on what topics he covers. It's just interviewing interesting people. And he said on his website, he uses like kind of topic paths, I want to call them. So you're creating these kind of like little micro eco zones for people to experience the podcast the best. And a lot of the times this is this is always amazing to me is the first episode, the one you very first release, is the one of the most downloaded podcast episodes of all time. Now, it doesn't matter what podcast show, it, people will always go like, you know what, I really enjoyed the latest episode about sandwich making, or, you know, my D&D adventure game. Um, people will go, I love this so much, I really want to enjoy more of this, but they, I've exhausted the latest one, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Well, I'm gonna go back 300 episodes and I'm gonna start my journey there. Well, your first episode better be the damnedest best one because people are always gonna be going back there. And sometimes you need to provide that. And this gentleman at this the conference said that. I always provide a link. Okay, here's our very first episode. Start your journey there. If you're that determined, start at the beginning and you work your way forward because people will do it. And people could burn through eight episodes in a day. So keep that in mind, like everybody's starting their journey in a different spot than you're anticipating, but you need to provide the best listening customer journey for them all along the way. So very interesting, very cool, nice way to think about it. So that was podcast bingo.